Distance learning. We all know that distance learning is a way of educating students online. Lectures and learning materials are sent over the internet. Students work from home, not in a classroom. We have two types of online distance learning. First is synchronous distance learning. What is synchronous learning? Synchronous learning is any type of learning that takes place in real time, where a group of people are engaging in learning simultaneously. Synchronous learning enables learners to ask questions and receive answers on the spot, while also collaborating freely with their co-learners. It means that a learning experience that relies upon the internet. Some examples of synchronous learning include live webinars, video conferencing, virtual classrooms, and instant messaging. We also use Google Classroom, Google Meet, Zoom, Facebook, and other distance learning. Pros of synchronous learning High interactions with instructors and other learners. It means that learners can easily interact with instructors and other learners. Making group activities is possible. Feedback is immediate. Synchronous learning takes place in real time, which means learners can get immediate feedback. Ideas and opinions can also be promptly shared with fellow learners. And lastly, learners' questions can be answered instantly. If the learners are having trouble with any of the course content, synchronous learning allows them to ask questions and get instantaneous answers. Cons of synchronous learning Learners adhere to a specific training schedule and can't access content where and when they like. Means that synchronous learners have to be online at a certain time, and therefore their learning has to adhere to a specific training schedule. Learners can't access content where and when they like to accommodate their learners and offer more flexibility. You could provide a webinar recording of the training session through your LMS. Some learners may feel they're not receiving the individual attention they need. Means that, due to the group dynamic of real-time synchronous learning, some learners may feel they're not receiving the individual attentions they need. This is especially true if there is any part of the training they do not fully understand. To bypass this, try checking in on the progress of your learners by setting aside time during training for one-to-one -one or group Q&A sessions. And lastly, the quality of the sessions depends on the instructors. The effectiveness of how will your learners understand the course content depends more on the quality of the instructors than the learners themselves. To overcome this, ensure your instructors receive a relevant training so they're fully prepared for their role. Requiring instructors to plan their sessions ahead of time will also ensure they'll deliver a great learning experience for your learners. Hello, good day everyone. I am Felicity Dongsal, a BSNet student, section ES21. Our team was assigned to report the ICT in various content areas. Under the ICT various content areas is the distance learning. So today, I am going to discuss to you what distance learning is and the types of online distance learning. Distance learning is an educational process where students receive instructions through online classes, video recordings, video conferencing, or any other audio-visual technology medium. It enables people to receive education 
without having to be physically present in a classroom. And also, distance learning programs can be very convenient and effective way to acquire more education. This may seem difficult without students and teachers interacting in a classroom, but people may but people enrolled in distance learning in programs can learn just as much away from a classroom as in one. And now, let's talk about the types of online distance learning. One type of online distance learning is the asynchronous distance learning. Asynchronous learning is a type of learning in which the student and teacher are not directly communicating in real time. In the world of online learning, this allows you to learn at your own pace, regardless of time zone, location, or schedule. There are some benefits of asynchronous learning and disadvantage of asynchronous learning. One of the benefits of asynchronous learning is flexibility. When we say flexibility, it is the ability to control the speed and pacing at which you complete the course gives you a greater sense of freedom and at the same time more responsibility. This allows for greater opportunities for students who may have other obligations and who, who might not be able to attend a traditional class. The second one is practicality. When we say practicality, it is more than giving students greater agency over their own learning. Asynchronous learning is simply more practical. Imagine being able to keep your part-time job while, while you attend college or being able to take a certain program that would normally be too far away for you to consider. The last one is the affordability. Asynchronous learning can not only save you time but also money. Take for example the ability to save on basic travel expenses or school supplies because you are not required to travel. There are a few disadvantages when an asynchronous learning environment. One is isolation. Isolation is a major hurdle for online learners. For those that enjoy learning alongside their peers or in social settings, asynchronous learning might take a bit of getting used to. The second one is it requires self-discipline. In general, a lot of responsibility falls upon the student to not wait until the last minute to turn in assignments and this is especially true while learning asynchronously. The third one is lack of instant feedback. While asynchronous learning more often than not has built-in communication tools to communicate with teachers and fellow students, the fact of the matter is that this communication is not always instant. The last one is limited contact with an instructor. With everyone being different time zones and on different schedules, it is likely that you will be responding to emails and messages whenever you are available and not at the same time as your classmates. Here are some asynchronous learning activities. One is read plus take notes, watch video-based instruction, listen to podcasts, explore teacher-created resources, engage in online discussions, practice plus review, research plus, plus explore, and the last one is reflect plus document learning. That's all. Thank you for listening. This is Felicity Dongsal. Good day. I am Maria Febri de la Cruz from Team 4, and I will be discussing the topic technology tools in a collaborative classroom environment. Discussion tools. Discussion tools are the apps that we use to communicate and it also allow conversations or dialogue between learners through mediums such as text, video, audio, and image. Examples of discussion tools are SurveyMonkey. SurveyMonkey is a site that enables a person to develop a survey for use over the internet. And the use of SurveyMonkey is to gather opinions and transform them into people-powered data. Next is Today's Meet. Today's Meet is a back-channeling tool that allows students to participate in synchronous or asynchronous discussion in virtual classroom created by instructors. And it is an easy-to-use digital tool that can enhance discussion. 
Go Soapbox. Go Soapbox is a web-based clicker tool used by educators to keep students engaged and gain real-time insight into students' comprehension. The use of this app is to allow students to submit replies online or from any mobile device. Lastly is Recap. Recap is a free response and reflection website and app that allow students to provide short text, audio, and video responses to instructors. And Recap is beneficial to students and instructor. The student have a better grasp of concept that is being taught in class while the instructor is able to assess not only students learning but also track students progress in a course. Communication through collaboration. Communicating by exchanging thoughts and ideas. Example of this are blogging or kid blog. Blogging or kid blog is an informational website published on the World Wide Web. Blogs gives us something to share and talk about on our social media channels and instructors can also use blogging to share lessons or topics. Next is Wikispaces, a classroom management tool keeping teacher and students organized and on task. And this can also help students to know what activity or task was given for them to answer or do. Lastly, Padlet. Padlet can be used by students and teacher to post notes on a common page. Padlet is a free online tool that is best described as an online notice board. Students and teachers use this to post concern or announcement and it can be accessed easily. Good morning everyone. I am Faye Estelle from BSNET ES21. What I will discuss today is just a continuation of what Ms. De La Cruz discussed. So now let's talk about the 5 technology tools for classroom collaboration. 5 technology tools for classroom collaboration. We have Google Apps for Education, Kahoot, Flipgrid Mindmaster, and Google Hangouts. First is Google Apps for Education. Google Apps for Education enables students and teachers to collaborate more effectively on papers, spreadsheets, and presentations. The beauty of the Google Suite for Education is several people can contribute simultaneously, so it's truly designed for collaboration. Another great feature of Google App is that they automatically save your work. There is also a limit of 50 simultaneous collaborators for Google Docs and Sheets and a limit of 200 total viewers and editors. Text Kahoot Kahoot is a game-based learning platform used as educational technology in school and other educational institutions. A classroom response system that gives educators an engaging way to test the knowledge of their students. Kahoot can be used to boost the collaboration through encouraging students to be the leaders and quiz makers, sample to research, create, and present their own quizzes to the class. Third, Flipgrid. Flipgrid is a video discussion community for your classroom that uses student voice to collaboration, discussion, and engagement. Flipgrid is a great way to build the facilitating collaboration. Flipgrid allows you to respond to assignments that your teacher gives you by creating short videos and you can also respond to your classmates with videos as well. Next, MindMeister. MindMeister is a collaborative web-based tool that enables group to brainstorm in one mind map document during the early phases of group work. MindMeister teaches students to work as a team to manage and plan projects effectively and to break complex tasks down into smaller, more manageable parts and also students 
can continue to use the documents for collaborating during the course of a project. Thus, Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts is a great way to bring remote groups of students together to communicate and collaborate. With Google Hangouts, inviting a guest speaker into the classroom has never been easier. Google Hangouts enable anyone from around the world to visit a school. You can also use Hangouts on air to record video so you can record the day's class and post a link in your class website for students that were absent. And that is the 5 technology tools for classroom collaboration. Now let's talk about the 10 examples of modern technology. We have Classcraft, Adobe Spark Video, Seesaw, Google Classroom, YouTube, Nearpod VR, Vintage, KidVlog, Science360 Video, and Canva. Classcraft. Classcraft uses these same gaming principles to engage students in the educational process and create a more harmonized learning environment. The platform encourages students to work together as they build academic and social skills. Classcraft is free and also has a free paid version which offers teachers a suite of additional features. By engaging children and immersing them, in the subject matter, in a fun way, teachers can help their students develop a love of learning. Adobe Spark Video Spark Video is an app that kids can use to create their own instructional videos. Part of Adobe Spark platform, the program comes with ready-made templates, image, and sounds to inspire. One of the most exciting ways for students to engage in content is to practice teaching it themselves. Students can develop their own subject-related narrative video which can reinforce the learning they have done. Seesaw Seesaw, this creative learning portfolio system enhances communication between teachers, parents, and administrators. With a variety of activities to choose from, teachers can select an assignment or create their own. One of the best features of this app is the lack of paperwork for the teacher, and also when students have completed the task, they can add their work to their personal portfolio. Google Classroom Google Classroom app enables teachers to organize various tasks from a single digital location. Instructors are able to give assignments, surveys, and quizzes, grade students' work, and more. YouTube YouTube can help your visual learners grasp concepts including math, coding, and science. With this online tool, teachers can create their own personal instruction videos for their classroom or compile collected clips into subject matter playlists. Last is Nearpod VR. Nearpod VR or Nearpod Virtual Reality. Teachers can use Nearpod VR to enhance lesson in history, life sciences, or just about any subject matter through a VR experience. VR is also a way to engage students with visual and hands-on learning in a meaningful way for students. Relevance and appropriateness in using technology in teaching and learning. In this report, I will be focusing on the relevance of technology and some point in appropriateness in the use of technology in teaching and learning. In this time of advancement, Technology has been very important in all fields of society. The educational sector recognizes the involvement of technology in teaching and learning. Moreover, because of some circumstances that we are experiencing in this pandemic, technology is very essential in education to cope up with the learning of the students. These are the relevance of technology in teaching and learning. First, Technology helps us to meet educational aims. These are the predetermined goal which inspires those in educational sector 
to obtain it through appropriate activities. There are factors which affect educational aims such as philosophy, may it be from the teacher, administrator, or the students. We also have the elements of human nature such as skills, knowledge, behavior, communication, and many more. Technology supports creativity and critical thinking in higher education. Students are expected to use technology in a beneficial way which is one of the goal of free Wi-Fi connection and educational institutions. It has been a great help that teachers use technology to maximize teaching and learning with students. With the use of technology, students will be able to learn using their gadgets. With educational sector allows virtual classes, learners will be able to use and develop their critical thinking because they don't have a choice but to study independently. Facilitates learning that could improve their performance for they are having a wide scope of knowledge which technology offers. We will be able to use our decision making and practice ourselves to understand the concepts more deeply and simply. Moreover, technology can be a good use in terms of managing teaching and learning activities such that there are online platforms in which teachers could use to give learning activities to students even in distance. And in return, those students are taught with the fundamental learning or concepts. The students will still be encouraged to explore more and find their own way of understanding that could fit their own learning style. In a pedagogical view, even though we, if not all, have healthy access to numerous and wide variety of technology for us to use. As future teachers and students right now, appropriateness of tools in teaching and learning must be taken into account in order to ensure its effectiveness. Technology engages students and creates motivated learners. Instructional materials, which are significantly used in teaching and learning environment, are considered as technology or technology as techniques. With the use of various instructional materials and learning methods, teachers will be able to encourage students to explore and enhance their strengths and strengthen their weaknesses. Teachers will have the opportunity to encourage students and wake up their inner self and feel motivated to actively participate and learn more and to meet the different competencies of the curriculum. Technology also enhances learning and growth, just like what I said earlier. Educational institutions encourage near faculty and students to have a virtual online classroom. Using any social media apps such as Google Meet, Google Classroom, Zoom, Canvas, and many other useful apps. Through these online platforms, teachers will only give activities to be done by their students with this, students will be able to learn on their own. Students' honest and genuine cooperation is needed but then appropriateness of learning materials or assessment tasks that are given virtually must be taken into account for the reason that not all students can learn new knowledge on their own. There should be gradual enhancement for the sake of the students. Students can learn anytime and anywhere they can utilize their free time in learning. Even on social media, there are lots of educational sites that are accessible. Research the websites that are legitimate. Refrain from reading fake news. Do not go to the sites that are not suitable for your age, especially the minors. The role of technology in present education First is, the presence of technology maximizes the level of education and makes it a lot easier. Today, direct access to the internet has made education easy. It has upgraded the level. Nowadays, students don't have to wait for the teacher to complete a topic. They can quickly learn or read whatever they need on an online platform or with the help of different educational apps. 
Nowadays, texts like computers and laptops or mobile phones are readily available and easy to use, helping you educate yourself. And also, the use of technology in education is beneficial for those who don't have much time on a day-to-day -day basis, especially those who work. Suppose a person wants to work and learn a new skill to improve or upgrade his or her work so that he or she can easily opt an online course. Especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, the schools were closed for more than five months, and the only possible way of education was through online mode. And lastly, technology rescued students from being uneducated for a year. Due to the technology that made education possible during COVID crisis, there are multiple smart classes available everywhere which increases students' interest and motivates them to learn and read. Improves teacher productivity and efficiency. Teachers can leverage technology to achieve new levels of productivity. Implement useful digital tools to expand learning, opportunities for students, and increase student support and engagement. It also enables teachers to improve their instruction methods and personalize learning. Schools can benefit from technology by reducing the cost of physical instructional materials, enhancing educational program efficiency, and making the best use of teacher time. How important is technology in education? The COVID-19 pandemic is quickly demonstrating why online education should be a vital part of teaching and learning. By integrating technology into existing curricula as opposed to using it solely as a crisis management tool, teachers can harness online learning as a powerful educational tool. The effective use of digital learning tools in classrooms can increase student engagement help teachers improve their lesson plans, and facilitate personalized learning. It also helps students to build essential 21st century skills. Virtual classrooms, video, augmented reality or AR, robots, and other technology tools can not only make class more lively, they can also create more inclusive learning environments that foster collaboration and inquisitiveness and enable teachers to collect data on student performance. These are the relevant technologies for teaching and learning. Blackboard, presentation software, classroom response systems, online projects and collaboration tools, information visualization tools, flipping the classroom, podcasts, and games. Good morning everyone. I am Shaster and C. Ingrashal from ES21. Now I am discussing the use of technology and learning. In selecting instructional materials, the age, emotional, and social development and skill level of the children for whom the materials are chosen should all be considered while selecting instructional materials. Instructional materials should be varied in terms of complexity, reader interest, and presentation of different points of views. In environmental factor, in selecting instructional materials, environmental educators must consider three primary issues. First is the alignment of environmental education topics and content with national standards, state curriculum frameworks, and existing courses of study. Second, professionally accepted criteria for judging the quality of materials. And last is the needs, interests, and environmental circumstances of local students. 
In the use of technology and learning, national standards for curricular content have been developed in several subject areas, and most states are revising or updating state curriculum frameworks to reflect national standards. Schools will be using state frameworks to design or revise courses and programs. When selecting materials for school environmental education programs, schools, schools should consider any state curriculum frameworks or guidelines having relevance to environmental education. Here are some dynamic variables that belongs to size of class and attitudes. First is the interaction between learners and educators in a classroom community is referred to as classroom dynamics. Second, the need to recognize the necessary characteristics or skills to teach in front of the learners and educators. Third is to come up with techniques to keep the learners interested to the topic. Next, the language to be used for a modern learners. They are improving their language competence, such as listening, speaking, reading, and writing in the chosen language in a variety of situations and contexts. And last is the significance of classroom dynamics is that it creates an interactive learning environment wherein the students and the teacher can effectively exchange information with each other without the unwanted barriers that will hinder the learning process. As what the saying goes, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. It means knowledge plays a vital role in shaping our life. It is an ever-going process and it does not stop even when you have come to the end of your education life. The most successful people are always seeking more knowledge. That's it. I hope you learned something and thank you for listening.